In this video, the working of a common port BMS is explained. A series of tests has been conducted to investigate the JK BMS control algorithms. A particular concern is the use of the intrinsic body diodes to flow current directionally when the fuel effect transistor is turned off to protect overcharging, overdischarging, or cold sub-zero temperature charging. The body dial causes a typical voltage drop of about 0.5 volts. At high currents such as 150 amps, that amounts to 75 watt of loss and a serious quantity of heat to be dissipated. The JKBMS is smart enough to handle and mitigate this potential concern gracefully. Solid state BMS are constructed of N channel metal oxide semiconductor fuel effect transistors, refer simply to as MOSFETs. They are used to gate the on-off of a battery charging and discharging function. N-channel MOSFETs are used because they have much lower drain to source resistance or RDS than the P-channel type. The BMS using N-channel MOSFET needs to be connected to the low side or negative side of the battery. Two groups of MOSFETs, each with many are joined in parallel to share the flow of current and to lower the resistant RDS. The two groups are then joined in series mirror image to form the independent, the independent charge and discharge controls. Most MOSFETs come with a body dial in parallel as an intrinsic part during the fabrication process. When the MOSFET is turned on, current is allowed to flow in either direction from source to drain or drain to source, behaving much like a resistor, RDS, as shown in the lower right graph. The MOSFETs in the JKBMS have one of the lowest resistance at 0.3 milliohms. When turned off, current no longer flow in the fuel effect transistor, but still can flow through the body dial in one direction. The typical body dial causes a voltage drop of about 0.5 volt, assuming constant here, to overcome source to drain diode forward voltage as shown in the upper right graph. When both MOSFET are off, no current can flow. When both MOSFETs are on, current can flow in either direction corresponding to charging or discharging. To ensure current flow in the discharge direction, the charge MOSFET is off and the discharge MOSFET is on. Vice versa, to ensure current flows in the charging direction, the charge MOSFET is on and the discharge MOSFET is off. As a control illustration of cold sub-zero charge protection, red color is used for normal temperature and the blue color is used for cold temperature. The direction of the arrows show the flow of current during discharging. At normal temperature, both the charge and discharge MOSFETs are on. Current flow through the path of least resistance represented by the red arrow. At cold temperature, the charge MOSFET is supposed to be off to protect from charging and the current should flow through its body diode, the blue arrow. 
and continue on to the discharge MOSFET, the red arrow. The penalty of current flowing through the body dial is huge, as shown in the table. The power loss in the body dial blue is more than 10 times the power loss in the FET, the red An experiment was carried out to evaluate the power loss scenario through the body dial. The circuit diagram represents the essential components relevant to this experiment. The test vehicle was a Class B camper van. The BMS was a JK 200M BMS. The battery was a 200 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery at about 13.2 volt at the time of test. The charger was the IOTA or IOTA brand rated 15 amp with on off control. The low was some LED lights totaled to about 2.4 amps. A 105 amp hour AGM battery at 100% state of charge was part of the electrical configuration in parallel with the other elements. The JK BMS Bluetooth app was used to activate charge and or discharge controls. The left screenshot shows the controls by user. The right screenshot shows the outcome by the BMS. As will be seen in the results summary page, the control and outcome may or may not be the same. Three groups of tests were conducted, namely A, normal temperature discharge, B, normal temperature charge and discharge, and C, cold temperature protection. The purpose of this series of tests was to force and or trick the current to flow through the body dial of the charge MOSFET and record the effect. The results are summarized in the table. The first and second column show the test group and sequence. The third column shows the low as minus 2.4 amp, and the negative sign designates discharge. The fourth, I'm sorry, the next four columns show the charge discharge controls by the user and outcome or responses by the BMS. The ninth column show the current reported by the BMS. The tenth column is my interpretation of the current paths, fuel effect dial or, I'm sorry, fuel effect transistor or dial through the charge MOSFET. Hopefully by now you can realize that if the current is not zero and one of the MOSFET is off, the current must flow through its body dial. I use this principle to force current through the body dial of the charge MOSFET. Initially, with both charge and discharge turned on, I turned the LED lights on to start the discharge process. In the first test point, A1, I turn charge control off, trying to force the current through the dial, but the BMS ignored my command. In A2, I turn charge and discharge off, and the BMS accepted my command. In A3, I turn discharge on, but the BMS only recorded minus 
0.2M. The lion's share of the low current was supported by the AGM battery since the effective lithium battery voltage had dropped lower than the AGM due to the body diode forward voltage deduction. However, this only lasted for a few seconds. In A4, the BMS turned on by itself to charge MOSFET to switch the current path from body diode to the FET. The recorded current shot up to about minus 5 amp. Soon after, in A5, the BMS recorded a steady state discharge current of minus 2.4 amp. I turn off BMS charge and discharge and then I plug in the 15 amp iota charger at 14.2 volt open circuit voltage via shore power in the B series tests. In B1, I turn on charge control only, but the BMS decided by itself to turn on both charge and discharge to avoid the diode path. In B2, I tried to turn off this charge but was ignored. To prep for the cold temperature series of tests, I turned the charger, the BMS charge and discharge controls off. I then raised the cold temperature protect threshold higher than the ambient temperature to simulate cold temperature charge protection. In C1, I turned on charge control but was ignored. In C2, with both charge and discharge controls off, I turned on discharge. Again, just like in the A series test, the BMS recorded only minus 0.2 amp, but for only a few seconds. Then in C3, the BMS turned on charge control by itself and recorded the normal minus 2.4 amp in spite of the cold temperature protection. The BMS was smart enough to know that the net current was in discharge. Turning on charge control would not charge a battery, but would switch the current path from the diode to the FET. So without warning to the BMS, I plug in the 15 amp charger. The BMS was caught off guard and recorded a 11 amp charge current, failing the cold temperature charge protection. Fortunately, this only lasted seconds, and I suppose that such a short period of cold temperature char charging would not hurt the battery. In C5, once the BMS realized that the net current is positive or charging, it reverted back to charge off immediately by itself. You can read the remark by yourself and I will make the additional uh, conclusion as follows. The power loss and heat generation in the body dial is neither a concern nor an issue. It is good for the body dial to be there to facilitate transitions and avoid interruptions. The JKBMS is extremely smart to provide protection and efficient control, but miss momentarily a step charging profile and fail cold temperature protection momentarily. A handful of references show that low current charging in mild cold temperature should not be harmful 
to the lithium iron phosphate battery. Although the JKBMS stumbled momentarily with the step charging profile, it should handle easily a soft ramp charging profile as in the underhood generator bomber combo. The soft ramp should provide enough time for the JKBMS to detect the discharge to charge transition and to protect from cold temperature charging. Finally, unless for storage, the user should turn on charge and discharge controls and leave them alone 24-7. Have a peace of mind that the JKBMS uses only 2 milliamp for overhead and is currently the best battery management system in the market at its price range. Thank you for watching and uh, let me know if you have questions. Have a good day. Bye-bye.